Are there sleeper cells in the West? That's my prediction. Yeah. Women are. And what's the long-term goal here? The long-term is just get rid of Jewish people. Welcome back to another episode of the Quill Etc. podcast. You're with me, Zoe Booth. And today I'm speaking with Suha Hassan. Suha is originally from Iraq and now lives in the States. She holds a PhD from Al Nahrain University in Baghdad and is currently a doctoral candidate in the School of Conflict Analysis and Resolution at George Mason University. In this conversation, we talk about Sunni versus Shia Islam and how Hamas which is traditionally Sunni, is actually moving towards Shiism. We talk about the long-term goals of Islamists and how they want to convert the world to Islam. We talk about why Hamas uses women and children as human shields and how this is celebrated, whereas when ISIS killed women and children, they were criticized heavily for that. We talk about the differences between ISIS and Hamas. We talk about how Iran has sleeper cells, probably in the West, and we just don't know about them yet. How Islam needs a new interpretation to update it to be more aligned with modern times. Why Islam has such an issue with Jewish people and why their long-term goal is to exterminate the Jewish race. And we talk about what governments need to be doing. For example, how Twitter and YouTube helps recruit people to join jihad in the West. I really hope you enjoy this conversation. Suha is doing extremely important work and we should all be very thankful that she's doing it because it makes us all safer. So I really hope you enjoy this conversation. If you do, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the Quillette channel. Without much further ado, let's get into the conversation. So Suha, could you tell the audience a little bit about uh, your expertise and how you came in to study this topic? I am currently a PhD candidate in the School of Conflict and Analysis with George Mason University. And I'm, I'm also a specialist in terrorism, homeland security. I specialize during this uh, seven years in terrorism, especially in Islamist terrorist group. And before that, I was also a, a student of master with Oregon State University, which I spent like uh, two years working on ISIS in 2014, so around 15, 15, 16. So my journey with ISIS and other Islamist terrorist group began seven to eight years ago. Currently, my dissertation is about investigating why and how uh, people on an individual level decide to join ISIS group. Actually, I believe I am the first Iraqi woman or the from uh, from from a minority group who went to Iraq and did a face-to-face interview with the ex-ISIS fighter last summer. I did around 80 interviews with the, with three groups, the local, the Iraqi and Syrians, then the Arab International, which is the other groups from Middle East, and then the international from Europe and some from Europe and other international uh, nationalities. My goal was to find what, what brings those people together to join to join ISIS as an organization and as a movement to come to Iraq and why do that? So actually, I was thinking during this process, it is not enough to to hear or do like a, a line analysis or media analysis. I want to observe people face to face and understand their motivation and do comparison. Especially, I was actually interested to see the international uh, fighters because I was more interested in the national security uh, regarding the United States, because this, this, this jihadist group will never stop. But if we understand what's going on in their brain, then this will shift the story. And later, this helped me to understand, for example, what Yahya Sinwar is saying, what, uh, what uh, Hezbollah is saying, those groups. So when you understand all the whole story from inside, and talk to them to the face-to-face. This will help you. I build up later on a different analysis on Hamas, on Hezbollah, on Nasrallah, on Nasrallah so to understand the whole the story of about those. And the most important thing for me, I want to understand from, uh, from like from Arabic. Uh, I'm originally from Iraq. I speak Arabic. I didn't want any interpreter or mediator interfere in the process. Because I saw when we do, when the process of a translation or a translation occur, 
there is a misunderstanding in the real goal of what's going on. We so this later will affect our counterterrorism policy. So it will. So if we don't understand what they are saying, how they we will cannot understand how they behave, mm-hmm. and then we don't understand all this terrorist uh, operation collectively. Mm-hmm. So wow, very, that's... very important work. And thank you for doing it because it helps it. keep keep us all safe. So thank you so much. And what, what did you it. find from your interviews? Uh, so basically, because I did not defend my dissertation, it's a little difficult to speak. But let's say in general, I found that uh, I'm here like because I will defend in a few months. Uh, so the plan is... This is everything uh, Everything here in the whole story of jihadist group, there is a religious root. And denying this, denying this religious root is still to reshape different stories, reshape, uh, reshape the, make the counterterrorism not effective. So my finding is let's open the books, the religious books and tell, retell the story. For example, let's go here. This is not from my dissertation. This is from from this uh, from Yahya Sinwar himself. Let's say what he said. Let's translate what he's saying. In his book, uh, Throne of Incarnation, it's a great liberation and it is a heart. I, I translated and it's heart Al Aqsa Mosque. It is the it is the great liberation. So he's here here. For example, he said great liberation. If we translate great liberation, we just understand it on it is meaning, right? A great unliberation. But actually, this is a great unliberation. Uh, those two words have a great bag, religious background root, cultural root, historical root, uh, societal root. So here what's going on, there's behind these two words a great story. What does a great liberation mean? It means that I need to create a great chaotic mass mass disruption. From there, I can make next move. So at first, I thought, okay, he's thinking of demonizing Jewish people. Then he demonized West. But this narrative is is this is narrative is already none for us. But this, this is what they to, they tell the story. But here's there's an, another level is not so far it have not been seen or it's also demonizing the moderate. Muslim, but this time, if we demonize Muslim people and they um, let them feel guilt and shame all the time, here we create two two type of people, in especially in Western countries here in the United States, and also, how is that? If I demonize all Muslim people, either they feel guilty or shame, and this is a huge story when you feel accumulated, you are you are not doing the right job. Before toward uh, your uh, Muslim brothers. Here, there, you created a funny group. If you also demonize those people and let people, all the people, uh, have Islamophobia from them and feel they are not, not worthy and they are second level, you create, you create this narrative that we are, those especially who are people, there's million migrants of Muslim around in United States, in, in Europe, and you see now. So you, you create those, us versus them inside the Western countries. Then you have this, you create another level, which is isolation, not belonging, not just for those people who came as immigrants, but they're to be the new generations. Then you create enemy inside, inside the Western countries themselves. And that's what's going on now. So that's the word, the meaning of great liberation. But how sorry, we understand Sorry to this? interrupt. That's, that's his goal is to make some diaspora groups feel like outsiders feel like us it's us versus them in the west to like stir up trouble so that they they want to join this cause is that correct yes that's that's yeah but it's but we need to understand there's two types they it will already actually create it i hear many people saying uh we don't i follow media and see twitter and see what's people reaction to events we say we don't belong. We don't belong where? We don't have a place where. We have them to have a space where. So when they don't belong, what they will do? So what do you do? 
You want you to join outsider. a tribe. Yeah. 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 You, you, people need to belong to something. They, this mm -hmm. is the need. So, well, so this is one of the advantage of the interviewing like ex-ISIS fighter or interviewing people or face to face. They tell you the story, the real story and the actual meaning of the word. So word ha words, words in Islam and uh, actually Quran and Islam is all about narrative. How much of the narrative is a fixing a past or a historical wrong, like a shame of losing land or you know I've I've heard this I've I've read about it Richard Landis wrote about it about how like the emotional Nakba that Islam yeah. tells a story that we must overthrow the people who beat us or you know I'm yeah, not explaining but, myself yeah. super well so let's back to the narrative of jihad yes do we understand jihad very well for example here is the thing I uh I explained many times, but I think still we need to dig more in this. If we understand that there is a three level of, in general, this is the three Muslim identity. This is identity actually, usually the, the first day for the baby born actually, because they, yeah, because there's a, a narrative called them, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, you are born a Muslim, I'm like this. The first birth, the first moment actually, you see the life, so it is like food and everyday action. So this is the religion for Muslim. But there is three levels in each Muslim identity. One is one is the societal level, which is on the majority of Muslim operate, which is societal level. I help you, you help me. I live that community. I enjoy. I have this brother to brother relationship, which is okay so far because most communities cooperate together. But then there is the the second the second also if you imagine like a, as a stair, so then you have the moral level, which is you have a responsibility to fix what is wrong uh, wrong things. Okay, but how much? Where is the limit? You have limit when you see wrong things, you fix it. But your limit is is very is very narrow. As an individual, you don't you don't exceed to you don't have a obligation to fix all the world or you. What they do, the jihadist group, instigate this level. For example, we need to help women in Palestine. We do see the blood and how the blood shed in uh, the in uh, in this war. We don't do the the duty, but this is also a moral level. Then they instigate the spiritual level, which is the highest level of jihad. And no one required from, even like in the Quranic test, it's not required from women and children to go to this higher level, spiritual level. But what Hamas is doing, and maybe Hezbollah is taking this step or, or later, the spiritual level require women, children, to go to fight, to instigate them to go. So that's why there's expectation. That's my prediction. That's what I am expecting later. And maybe we'll see that like a kind of suicide suicide attack will occur. He, uh, maybe um, in Western, some Western countries, some in, uh, some, in I, I, some in Jordan, some in Egypt, this is kind of action will occur because they start to instigate more level, which is the spiritual level, which is now, which is currently Hamas is working. Since uh, October 7, I follow, I'm following Hamas to understand how they are thinking. Even Hamas think like could be defeated. Here's the thing. What about creating another group and another group and another group? How is that will occur? By blood. In Islam, in general, in Quran, in Islam, the core of Islam, the core of the spiritual jihad is Muslim, um, the Muslim is Muslim blood is a holy blood. That's the standard, no matter what. It is the center of Quran, the, the Muslim blood. Then why Hamas sacrifice, put them, I will not say, say, put them in the front of the battle and why they are hide? 
why they and especially putting the children mm, using human shields mm. so are they a human shield or what and if you the idea is if more blood will shed that i am pushing people the emotion of people to the spiritual level does that make sense for you yeah and i've heard hamas leaders say similar things that yeah. actually the shedding of blood especially of children and women invigorates us to yeah. fight more yeah. and to fight more mm. yeah but it is not just fighting more creating more groups mm. more 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 generations i recently saw many many small videos from jordan it's kids why six six seven years old holding a weapon and say we will go to jihad we will go to jihad her so seven and eight years why there is a focus on this age in jordan jordan is supposed to be a more moderate country and i was wondering if that was because of the monarchy that the monarchy was sort of keeping things a bit more stable and not letting these jihadi groups raise to power do is that correct yeah so i think from what i saw so far if you just google go to youtube between each hour that's my estimation because i'm not a cyber security person each hour there's a video about gaza about hamas about blood about women and if you go to other media you will see the focus especially and there's also the the, the nashid al islami which is a call for jihad and there's a pic, and there's an image of women crying the woman central of hamas since 7 october till the present day is showing images of see children and women so they say those we are sacrificed those were does it have anything to do with them knowing that everyone gets very emotional when they see women and children in pain and especially in the west mm. that's one of the most, it's the best marketing for them or the best propaganda to be anti-Israel is to see women and children in pain. Do they know, do they purposely try to pull on our emotional heartstrings? Is that yes. part of it? But but I will not say propaganda. It's a project. It's a goal. Uh, if we say propaganda, that means we are just recu- recruiting here and there. But this is a very long project shaping the identity of jihad shaping the narrative of jihad shaping the ideology of jihad here is the thing i have read hundreds of articles in arabic all of them say jihad before 7 october is different from after 7 october hundreds of articles in arabic the same all of them the same so it is uh, so they are saying this nation or islamic nation wake up it is the it is the the tiger the tiger who wake up now it is very scary because we if we think about hamas as a short term or just like it is a flood what is the meaning of the word the flood in islam in religion in our religion what is the meaning it is mean flood it mean i bloodshed that is the real translation of a flood. So it is not just about uh, the current conflict. Let's, why, let's wake up this generation by condensation of a blood, sacrificing women. And what's the long-term goal here? The long-term is just get rid of Jewish people. Uh, that's what Sinwar, uh, he said, part of uh, the heart of Aqsa flood is Al-Aqsa, libra- the great liberation, the great liberation ideas, if let's keep fighting, extend fighting, till, till the, the things occur what they want. So they want actually, how's this, how Islam began? Begin like this actually, small, then extend, A small few peoples. So Hamas, well, Hamas is how many thousands? But look at them now. So people all over the world. So this is the idea of them. They believe they are the the real the real the real ancestor of, 
Prophet Muhammad. Let's think about this. It is uh, Medina Munawara or Medina Munawara, and this is the beginning of the Islam. So they call it the beginning of Islam. For them, Islam was, was sleeping. Muslims were sleeping for long term. Let's wake up them. And this is as, as they are. So this is the goal again. So, but how is that will occur? They are the core point, and then it's a flood. Where does the flood end? It will not end. Generation after generation. Even if you heard like after Haniya, uh, Haniya cult, uh, every, every narrative in media, this is just the start. It is just another person. More, more leaders will come. Yeah. So, okay, getting rid of Jews. And by that you mean you mean fully exterminating the Jewish race. So what why why does Islam have a Jewish issue? Where does that begin? Uh, Islam the story. So actually uh, the first text in Quran put a line as that versus them. I think around I I remember 44, 44 times Jewish people and Israel were demonized and stigmatized and were described uh, by many, uh, by many, any hum, any human, and uh, by my, the, some, sometimes monkeys, sometimes, sorry for saying that, but this is what the okay. description in Quran. Mm-hmm. So there, this is the description, they are this, this honest, they are this 44 times and this is all text by text describing. So they're describing the Jewish people inside, inside. So if you imagine you pray five times, you pray five times, and you have to read one text of Quran, and including this, what does this happen? It's orientation. I told you, Islam is all about narrative. However, who shaped the narrative? The the Quran. So from there, the animosity come, emerge. So, so you're saying that I don't know how many billion Muslims there are in the world today. There are a few billion, and they say they pray five times a day. Each day, some Muslims are reciting, you know, mm-hmm. this stuff about Jews being monkey. I will, I, I will, I will not generalize some. So let's not generalize because there are some people read it as a as a story. Mm. as a historical context because it is a retell a stories of like the journey of Jewish that's the the whole text but but what Hamas is doing or other jihadist group is trying to describe it as a as a, a current status or it is a current situation for example it tells a story about something happened to Moses but what they are telling there so it is stories the story after story after story but when this when this narrative told as a story, some people read it as a story. This is just a history. But Hamas is insisting, and also Hezbollah and other group, insisting to create a, a, li- a living story. So mm-hmm. try to uh, to pull people from from current time to old time or to past time. Mm-hmm. Does that mm-hmm. make sense for you? Yeah. So aside from their goals of exterminating Jews. What are the other goals? So I told you, it is, it is people call, call it reviving al Khilafah, but it is not reviving al Khilafah. Reviving it is, Khilafah is just a small word for the, what's going on. They want to reshape the identity and the ideology of jihad. Which, oh, by the way, it's already the process of it. It's already there. There's a, the, the, the idea of Hamas, what is telling, because of that, by the way, it's the help of the media. The media is the, did a worse job here. Uh, so here, I will need those Muslims to do their task, their, uh, their job, is by making those around them also Muslim. <laughs> so by uh, doing this kind of work. So uh, they want to extend Islam here and there, and they're changing the nation. Including uh, the West. Example, including the West also, and including changing the identity of the West also. <laughs> yeah. Don't imagine or thinking that 
bring, bringing more children, six or seven, is coming up from nowhere. Mm. There's, there's a story behind it. Right. So ideally, they would want no other religions on earth, only Islam. That's my concluding so far, because from the great liberation, that's what's looking for. And from the war, from Aqsa, and also repetitively, uh, Hamas speakers say Shahada and Jihad, Shahada, and the word Shaheed. So, yeah, what does Shaheed word, mean? You want Western? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so Shaheed is sacrificing yourself for the for the secure for the for the for the, for the cause of Islam, for the cause of Allah. Others that I, I actually wrote three 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 levels of what the shaheed means. If you want to be shaheed, you do have three tasks. First, to elevate his word, which is mean Allah, and to maintain the Islamic religion. Jihad for the safety of Muslim or rescuing Muslim. Jihad for the honor of religion. And the honor of religion so far, what Hamas is also keep saying, oh, we are here to to raise the, the honor of our religion. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's hard, I think, for people in the West like myself to fully comprehend because we're okay or we celebrate pluralism and having various cultures and religions and we think it's a beautiful thing in general to have you know various groups of people and this idea to have everything everyone is a muslim and there's no plurality it's it's hard to comprehend yeah, hard to imagine. yeah it's hard also to imagine so that's why it was like struggling to to collect my idea, what what they want to from Muslim around the world to do for them, and why they call it Aqsa flood. Everything is connected to to history and religion, and that's why we need to be very accurate when we translate the word and put the actual meaning, cultural meaning, historical meaning, religious meaning, and finally, if we brought all the pictures, then we put it in the middle of Quran and see what is this. So what I am doing is okay, so. I'm taking this text word by word. If we if we don't go word by word and put the root of this word, we will lose the path. By the way, also I'm not sure if this may be interesting. Hamas and Hezbollah usually communicate through this kind of narrative, uh, and also uh, the the northern militia in Iraq, militia in Lebanon, militia in Syria, militia in Houthi. If you go to Twitter, for example, that's what I have noticed three, four months ago. Try to understand what they, how they communicate. I saw the same text that used by Hizb Nasrallah by Ayatollah Khomeini, Ali Khamen, uh, so by Ayatollah. Then the same text by uh, Hamas. They use the same words, but just little bit manipulation, just little change. But if you are not Arabic person, native Arabic, they understand the root, the this is the synonyms and this is the rephrasing, you'll not catch it. So uh, you see there's a connection between uh, uh, the Iraqi militia, a connection between Hezbollah, the same thing, the same thing even between Hamas. So the same, there's this connection, but how they connect? They connect through Quran <laughs> text. Mm. So they're sending signals to each other and without, I'm not sure if anyone noticed how they communicate, but it's, mm. very, it's very fun to see how this works. What? Do you predict is going to happen in the near future with Iran and Hezbollah and Israel? Um, I think um, I'm still putting my ideas together, but I think there is there will be kind of maybe small operations. We need to be very careful about this because usually Iran use their uh, sleeping mm -hmm. cell. Mm. So maybe we will see individual level of operations, two to three people, two to three groups, a small a group from two or three, uh, this kind of operation here and there. So Hamas, you, uh, sorry, uh, Iran usually use Tokyo system, and I wrote a lot about it. Tokyo system is allow people to be silent till the order coming. 
So now we don't know how many sleeping cells here and there. So that's the way I'm, my, my, my prediction is this is how Iran will respond by using those people. Are there sleeper cells in the West? That's my prediction, yeah. Because Tokyo allow people, those who like uh, to stay 10 years, 20 years silent, tell the order from Ayatollah come. How they inter uh, they in like uh, go inside communities through this. So you'll see something in Jordan, something here. How is that? Uh, this is will be more painful to for like for West for Western countries to uh, to to see this occur without catching Iran on the Iran putting it there, it's real hands. So you cannot catch Iran, but there it's their arms here and there. Do you think this is a good reason to consider immigration from Muslim majority countries? Not to that level, but I will say let's change the the narrative we speak with the with the other side, with a Muslim from from Muslim from Arabic countries or from and from other countries. Because the way the narrative is uh, is going on now, uh, us versus them, which is not helping, let's deconstruct even for like to help uh, Israeli people inside uh, inside Israel itself. Because there's a, a now a good opportunity for Israel to to take advantage of from the damage that Hamas caused. So instead of giving the opportunity to Hamas to recruit people, especially those 15, 16, to recruit them because they are in need to recruit and use the anger and revenge, let's deconstruct Hamas narrative, Hezbollah narrative, and show the people how they manipulate and use them as a tools. How is that? And instead of, for example, like watching the immigration, let's start with, okay, show Show the Western, uh, the, those Muslim in uh, Muslim, what they are doing to them. So far, people are, it's not a brainwash, but they, this, they take people, the Hamas succeeds so far to pull the emotion of people to, to their side. Let's do decode Hamas narrative, decode Nasrallah narrative, decode Iran narrative. Since when so many people became ally with, uh, with Iran? There's no way because this is 1,400 year division. But now Sunni people also feel like Iran is their savior. Why is that? Since when? Iran use this, this narrative. See, they are, this is their your enemy, the West and Israel. But no one tell, tell the people the real story is that people who are living in Gaza People, they have life, they have jobs, they have, they have their kids, they have, they have everything. Why is this occur? Why? Why do you go to take people hostage? Why do you take hostages? Again, let's go tell the people the real story. That, okay, if you have a war with, with Israel, why you use children and, uh, children and women and disabled people and put them in the front of line? Did anyone ask that question? But no one in the Western countries use this question and go. Let's translate it to Arabic and put this narrative in the front of Arabic people. Maybe because Wake it's up, very risky to do so? You risk no, death? I, no, I don't think it is very risky. I think it is no one... Just go, go. And I, I started actually thinking about what's going on we so far why hamas is the leading is the leader of the narrative why iran is the leader of the narrative in the middle east this is the biggest problem of israel actually decode be decode and deconstruct hamas narrative and retell the story retell that i'm i'm not the one who did that to you and maybe bringing arabic people bring those women there's many women actually, and women who lost their children, and they don't want to, and they see Hamas very well. I bring those people and put them in front of, on the front of the table, 
I'll put it in front of the camera. What is that? And tell the story that I have a life, I had a life, and I have everything, but Hamas did that to me. By the way, before October 7, let's read, uh, let's see what Hamas did. Usually Hamas taking taxes, put people in, a, in prison. So I'm talking about civilians from Gaza, taking huge taxes, press uh, who protest, uh, who people who, who protest against them. And people were, were very uh, complaining a lot about them. This is before October 7. To get rid of these people, to get uh, rid of from economic situation and from their failure in the government, this is one of the, the doors they open. Let's remind the people how people lived under Hamas. So Iran is Shia. Yeah, yeah the majority. The majority. Is this, does that matter much in this context? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot because it's Iran project. If they, uh, it's uh, you see, uh, there is there it's their plan to use Shia ideology to extend. This is their regional project. So they extend the throne in Iraq. They extend in Syria, in Lebanon. Shia is uh, using Shia narrative. It's a very powerful uh, religious tool. But Hamas is Sunni. Hamas is shifting ideology to, to towards, what towards Iran. So uh, interesting. I I published article actually in the in the beginning of the events of October seven in Homeland Security. So in that's what I say that we need to pay attention to word by word. The first thing grabbed my attention is uh, the word Shahid, Prophet Muhammad Shahid. And uh, I have spent around eight to 10 years reading Islamic fuqa, both Shia and Sunni. And uh, so I'm, I'm, so it was, for me, it was interesting to see how the differences between the two groups actually and all the group and history. So it is not just I'm studying terrorism, but I'm studying really the fuqa. Because if we understand fuqa, we understand how. What is fiqa? So it's like a, yeah. Yeah, fiqh is how you interpret Quran of Prophet Muhammad Hadith. So, so in that it's actually the interpretation. So there is Shia fiqh and there is the Sunni fiqh. If you understand the the interpretation, you understand jihadist writing. So you cannot jump and directly go and read. Okay, this is what said. Uh, what is uh, Nasrallah said? This is what Hamas said. Everything built on fiqh. So, in, in Sunni fiqh, there's zero word about describing Prophet Muhammad Shahid. Zero. No matter what. And it was why the main speaker, Abu Ubaidah, of, of uh, Hamas, used the Prophet, and even in the last, last uh, his, uh, speech, he say the Shaheed Prophet Salaam Salaam Allah Prophet Muhammad a Shaheed a Shaheed Muhammad. This is why. So when you go, this is not totally the, the story of the story of religious story of Muslim Prophet Muhammad for Muslims died in his bed. And if you go to Shia Fakah, the interpretation, they say Prophet Muhammad killed and poisons by a Jewish by a Jewish woman. Uh, he was poisoned by a Jewish woman and he struggled and he died before as affected the, the result of this poisonous by Jewish woman. You Which see? woman? Does it mention? Not sure. Oh, yeah, it mentioned. I suppose the story, she gave him some milk, the milk was poisonous and that's why basically on this, he didn't die normally, but he died as a shaheed, which is sacrifices for cause. Okay. Uh, then, this is and the first speech of Abu Ubaidah and the second and last, the last one, I think before two weeks, he said, a Shaheed Muhammad, this is tell you how, how much Iran inside Hamas, this is a shift from here to here, from this side to this side. So when you shift from, from Sunni to Shia, Papa, 
a Shia ideology, then your behavior also change. So your tactical strategies also change because this is different the story. They they fight on their jihad and their interpretation of jihad different and that. So if we- I always had the impression that, you know, I'm not super (laughs) educated about Islam, obviously, but I always had the impression that the Shias were a bit more well-educated and like theological in the sense that they were well-read and therefore more- civilized I suppose and like less of a risk but doesn't seem like that necessarily Hmm. actually because of uh, Iranian goal strategic goals to extend so the the meaning of jihad for them is different where they are waiting al-Mahdi then they start the jihad against Jewish Hmm. but now you wrote a fantastic piece on that for Quillette which I will link (laughs) in the in the show notes about 12 issues and very interesting yeah mm. thank you but they were waiting but now what well, since Khomeini came and since now let's interpret jihad different way let's extend pave the way so now although they are not uh, so this is how you just manipulate a little bit with the words okay i'm not uh, i'm not uh, waiting uh, i'm waiting the imam i'm not fully raising jihad but i'm paving the way so how is paving the way? I I change, shift all, I change all the people to Shia. That is why they just started maybe back in Syria, in Iraq. How you see how much it, uh, like war crimes and the genocide against small Sunni groups here and there. If even you see it's like the Sunni, even uh, the demographic change, the huge demographic change in, in Sunni now in Baghdad, which is in the majority of like Sunni, in many cities, similar thing with uh, Syria. How how come like the Zaidi who never belonged like they belonged to Shia, but they were not uh, they were not matching with the Ethne Ashari or the twelve. They join join Iran, join the twelve Shia. So this is another tool. So as much as they extend, as much as they have power. That is how is Iran thinking, ideological, using their ideological power. That is the risk here. Mm. From from your interviews with jihadis, I'm really interested in what jihadis who came from the West had to say and whether they were any different to people, jihadis who grew up in the Middle East. (laughs) They are different, but we'll we'll show we'll we'll publish soon something <laughs> because hopefully we'll share like the dissertation in general because this is the result of the dissertation. But they are different. Right. They have different story from locals, different story from Arab people, and actually they are more riskier than than mm. from those here and there. That's uh, so far. Okay, why well, wait your dissertation, but. In the meantime, what can countries like, or governments, you know, the Australian government, the US, Canada, the UK, what can governments be doing to prevent radicalization at home in Australia or elsewhere? I will say the media. So that's that's uh, the most scary thing here is the media, the, uh, the media in Arabic. It's yes. Scary. Yeah, yeah, say more about that about Al Jazeera. I know that Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera in Arabic, and the Al Jazeera in English is very, very different. Yeah, I will pay attention to this. I will also pay attention to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this is one of the things that like upsets me. Why all the militias are having account <laughs> account on? Account Do you think they should be banned? Twitter? Sure. Because they are very risky, they are recruiting. If you, especially for the Iraqi militias, and if you go, or if you go Lebanese and uh, Iraqi, all against Israel in Arabic, all against Jewish. There, there is no nothing. Nothing is just about involving the narrative is all about Jewish since yeah. October seven. And um, this is, should be, but they should. This is, should be. I'm not sure. Not, I'm not cyber security person, but this is one of the red flag. Because okay, here they're recruiting through online, and uh, 
this is like well, why Twitter will give them opportunity to say what they want to say or recruit people. Uh, I'm very concerned about online recruiting. Uh, yeah. And also YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, uh, yeah, YouTube is... Uh, which is strange world. because YouTube can be quite sensitive. Like I've had videos demonetized for swearing or for showing, you know, news with a gun very, very briefly. One second of a gun flashes before your eyes and it's very sensitive, but perhaps in different languages, it's not as sensitive. No, they are, they are, they are very, uh, like available, like hundreds, hundreds of, uh, hundreds of YouTubes. It's all really uh, uh, about jihad, about instigation of jihad. Uh, it is about the end of the war. It is about Gaza war, about Askalan war. Uh, it's uh, just you type the three word Askalan Gaza in Arabic. You will see a flood of YouTubes. Uh, it's all again Jewish. Uh, they you see thousands of re uh, people review this, and this is very risky actually. Uh, Sometimes I listen to them because I want to know what they are saying. It's scary. It's, it mm. me, like it's it's call for jihad all the moment. Yeah. So do you think governments are doing enough? It sounds like they're not really doing enough. No, no. If you if they are available on Twitter, especially Twitter, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, I don't see any good in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how concerning. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they could uh, like do counter narrative or mm. do like mm. the uh, block them. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's need very special people for this job. Mm. But it's uh, recruiting online is very dangerous. Mm. Do you have any statistics or knowledge on how many people are converting to to Islam in the no, West? I don't know. Is no. it something I've been? You know, I love to spend time on Reddit and different groups and subcultures yeah. and see what people are talking about. And yeah. this is just an anecdote, but I've seen yeah. a few, you know, white women uh, and and boys as well, men converting mm -hmm. to Islam. And you see a, a girl who looks like me and she starts wearing the hijab and she starts, you know, going to mosque and all of these things. And I'm not sure that it's a big amount of, of women. It probably isn't, but it is interesting. And they call themselves reverts, not converts, reverts. but re reverts, reverts, which I think suggests that they were, I think the idea is that they, everyone is sort of like born with the truth, but they rejected mm -hmm. the truth and now they're back into it. They're a revert, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because one of the Hamas, the Hamas and the, uh, and Shia current narrative is is look let's go back to the truth to the the truth and uh, for them a the truth is just Islam yeah nothing it nothing a true just Islam so there is a there is a lot of of ideas that the truth hold by by Muslim only. So this is maybe the explanation of the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think about young people in the West on campuses who are, you know, there's a spectrum. Some people seem to be quite innocent in their support. They just want good things for the Palestinians and they feel sorry for them. Mm -hmm. And then there are people who, you know, in Sydney over the weekend, yeah. there were people holding up a sign of a photo of um, Ismail Haniya. Yeah. So quite openly supporting these people as martyrs and good people. Right. Yeah. What do you have to say to these people? Well, I have to say be careful of manipulation of Hamas narrative because they are using you as a tool to mobilize people. This is you need to understand what is the real people of Gaza wanted, and this is not what they wanted. The real needs of people, which is peace, which is Hamas stolen from them. People need to respect other religion, which is Hamas also stolen from people. 
you need to understand that Mahatma Mahas is using religion and also women and children and sacrifice them, put them in the front of the line. And you need to ask yourself if they are holding the truth, if they are defending on Gaza, if they are having a real story, what kind of people they are when they do condemn, do blood, do shed a blood of people's bloodshed and they are hiding in tunnels. Why is that? Why they are still alive and why they're still using hostages? Why they are still, you have a lot of hostages are inside deprivated from their families. Just think about this. What would happen if Hamas did not start this issue from the beginning? So but to play, to, think about. to yeah. play devil's advocate, they will say, well, Suha, this didn't start on October 7th. Israel has been treating the Palestinians terribly for decades and I don't necessarily agree with the violence and the hostage taking and the rape and the murder, but Israel's yeah. Israel was really bad to them. So let's back again to see how the bad comparison is very good. So let's compare people life before and after October 7th and decide which one is the best. Basically, people were going to school, college, even defending their master and PhD, and they are there, are there also. It is not good. So that's what's going on. But now, there's how many months, 10 months, just drag people there. And why is that? What is what is the result? It's just for their own, own, uh, own, own goals, to, that's all. Can, can you talk a little bit about Qatar and the role that Qatar plays in this? Which actually everyone is like feeling they are, they are very vague because mostly they are uh, manipulating, manipulating the media, manipulating narrative. They really want peace or they really want helping Israeli people? I don't think so. Do they really want to help people in Gaza? I don't think so. Manipulating in narrative also, as I said, they have different story in English, different story in Arabic. Especially in Arabic, they are sending a very bad message when they condense, they put this the images all the time. And uh, try to change it, create, create the huge narrative of hate against Israel. So what they want is, they, do they want power? Do they want just to blackmail other countries? It's, it's, it's very confusing. And how they, why they host Hamas leaders there and are they sort of controlled by Iran or I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if they're controlled by Iran. They are just will say it is a, it is win-win. <laughs> Mm. Even when the equation, they just yeah. want to. They so they are the they are, this is the, the they are playing the double do, uh, role. Mm -hmm. I'm he, I'm helping here. I'm helping here. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if they are really ally with Iran or really ally with the United States or with. Mm -hmm. So we need to be more, especially with using Al Jazeera and telling the stories of different stories. It's very confusing. Mm. Yeah. And in Australia, at least, some of our biggest news stations have a relationship with Al Jazeera where Al Jazeera is syndicated um, on public TV yeah. in Australia. So we pay taxes and it goes towards having Al Jazeera provided to us. It's a bit, I really have an issue with it. Yeah. So we also need to think about Al Jazeera. They, do they really want to peace or create more jihadist group. So if you back to Iraqi uh, the 2003, Al Jazeera, I, I was there in Iraq. The Al Jazeera, which is Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera media 24 hours, same thing is doing like Al Qaeda and other jihadist group based on this victimization, victimization and shameful and call for jihad and they put Al Qarabawi every hour in the uh, and call for a jihad, call for uh, liberating Iraqi women from liberating them from abuse from the United States. Uh, this is uh, this is your sister, this is your same same now in the in Al Jazeera, which is if you back 
to Iraq. It created uh, it created many many the hardest group. So you know, when I was at high school, ISIS was or ISIL uh, mm-hmm. or Islamic State was the biggest terrorist group, at least in in Australian media. It was something yeah. that terrified me, seeing these images of people being beheaded and things like this yeah. for the first time. And then there seemed to be a period. I don't know, five to 10 years where I remember thinking to myself and I think saying to my my partner, remember when people used to be scared to fly? You know, isn't that great yeah. that we're not scared to fly anymore? And, you yeah. know, and then October 7th happened and it seems like it's back. It, it this, this era of maybe jihad and terrorism feels like it's yeah. it's possible again. Would, yeah. would you say the same? So ISIS bring people to Iraq or in Syria to create a state, brought people from uh, from from all the globe to create a state. Hamas is already there spreading the idea of jihad outside. So we need to distinguish between how they are thinking. So this is for Hamas, that was the signal sending to people. I am here, I am exist. So I don't need to build a state. I have a state, which is different from ISIS. They don't have a state. They don't have legal. They have legal status or something. So from there, it's different. Mm-hmm. I am here, but they want to. The Israel want to displace me. Well, Hamas. This is one. The other difference is we need to think about it. How is that jihad is occur here? Uh, ISIS, when they. Uh, when they put uh, like one Muslim woman and they kill both Muslim women and children women, in general, people hated them. Muslim people hated them. Here, Hamas, no one uh, tried to create by using women and children. No, they. I will say uh, by this by Israel, which is uh, by by Jewish people, they said that the enemy is outsider. So that's why it was easy for using the women and children sacrificing them to say the enemy is sacrificing and, and we are exist so this is different 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 then if we differentiate between isis that's why i always say don't mix hamas with isis because you will not understand how the mm-hmm. jihad will occur and that's too different using the women using people a human muslim people as a human shield why it was accepted in the beginning uh in the, why it was rejected by people and muslim people so you see people hate hate isis but now Hamas is saying, look, I am shaping the jihad again, the idea of jihad to the, let you distinguish. You see there is a white and a black. We are the white and this is a black. The white is we are we are the people and this is the enemy. Not like ISIS who may who like disrupt uh, uh, make the idea of Islam and people hate uh, hate Muslim uh, hate Muslim. This is our enemy. And you see that as I said, people in Sydney now protest <laughs> holding Hania. So there's why people hate in, in all the world, even you, you said, I, you said, I'm scared from ISIS, I hate ISIS. But here people holding Hania yeah. will image. So they don't hold, they don't hate him. They, they, love, they started to love him. That's the, the difference. So that's why I said we need to retell the story and maybe bring people from, from Gaza themselves to tell the story. There's a lot of people, by the way, Star, there's a lot of people. I read the people, people stories. If, if Hamas did not that, we will be surviving. We will be living like this. Let's brought these people and put them in the front of the camera to tell the story. Yeah, tell the the real story. Mm. I have heard a few dissidents, I suppose, from well Palestinians who are truly pro peace and they don't like Hamas. They don't support Hamas, but then. It does seem like study that latest study does show that people in Gaza did support Hamas. So, and then what you say about it being written in the Quran multiple times, this hatred of Jews. I think how how can we how can we have peace if there if it's in the religion to to hate Jews? I know that. Uh, Not everyone does, but... So, yeah, we need to let people differentiate between 
a text written 1,400 years. That's what every time I say. This is 104,100 more years. Let's tell the people, and even in Quran, it's still this is a story of all. Uh, they tell you it is an ancient story, so there is no obligation or there's no, nothing tell you to go against Jewish people. You go against Christian people, and and do this. But let's still tell people about this. This is here what Hamas is doing. Hamas narrative strategy. If we understand Hamas narrative, special and. Iran narratives. So if we go to Hamas strategy, Iran strategy, how they manipulate those and how they rephrase and how they abstract the the Quran story and tell them this is very ancient and just read the book as a book, a historical book. If they read it as a historical book, you don't have to go to this to this all this dilemma. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, because you know there are obviously parts of the Hebrew Bible, the first the Old Testament that are very violent and yet only a very, very, very small minority of Christians and Jews really believe, let alone want to enact, you know, stonings or the killing of gays or women or things like this. So here's the thing based on my reading. So when they renew or rewrite, even the recent scholars from Egypt, I I read from, I read many from, from Egypt, from Lebanon, what they do, is they just rephrase. They don't re rewrite, which is different. So I uh, let's so they don't uh, say, okay, this is an ancient thing. Let's just stop here. This is a uh, historical thing. Let's, and they even they don't correct. For example, stoning. No, this is still valid. This is uh, uh, gay rights. This is still va- uh, gay. There's no gay rights. This is still valid. But why we don't tell people, okay, what about exist, uh, like sharing, exist, sharing, uh, sharing and communal living in coexistence with others? So this is not here. We still not arrived here. Even even Al Azhar, I think Al Azhar should play a more role in this. Okay, let's correct the 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 text of Prophet Muhammad text again. Let's put pro- a pro- uh, Correct the fiqh. We need a new fiqh, by the way. Even if, for example, I as a, I came from a Muslim family, I always protest against my rights. We don't have zero rights. Zero rights as a woman. Because why is that? You don't have right to 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 get married to get married by yourself. You don't have right to lead. You don't have right in heritage. You don't have. So why there is there is a man to lead me all the way? So this was like upset me. One of the things that lead me actually to, to this to the to this story, I why I have to why I don't have a right to decide if I put hijab or don't put hijab. It's so I, it's, it's so injustice when we like for example I said let's correct the idea about hijab. We don't let women choose. We don't have the right to choose. This is not available now. So yeah, I agree with you. We need to to do a lot of correction, and this are is you, not happening yet. Are you still a, a Muslim, a believing, practicing Muslim? <laughs> I was given this question. I study Islam. I study Islam. Okay. I, I study. Yeah, I, I studied uh, in kind of interest, but uh, uh, that's okay. You don't family. have to answer. Yeah. 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 And okay, well, it's very, very interesting. And if we had more time, I'd, I'd love to know if you were comfortable about it, maybe one day talking about what it was like growing up in Iraq and how you came to live in the States. But unfortunately, we don't have sure. yeah, too much more time left. Is there anything yeah. else Thanks you'd like to? Me. Yeah, yeah. no, thank, thank you for joining me. And hopefully um, you contribute to Quillette again in the future. Your piece with Pierre James was really fabulous. And thank you for the extremely important work that you do. Yeah, thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.